Hey everyone, Sparrow here. In today's episode of True North Sanctuary, we are finishing up this mountain that was built as the backdrop for the doll sheep habitat last week. Do check that video out if you haven't already to see all of this terrain work. I did find it kind of funny that I struggled with that last week just to punch holes in it this week, but hey, can't hollow out a mountain if you don't have one to begin with. So that is what we are going to be doing today, among other things, building a tunnel through the mountain to not only improve guest flow, but you guessed it, provide more educational opportunities for visitors. The trestle walk we built last week will curve around the other side of the mountain and then head into a tunnel that pops back out on the landing at the mountain's left side. I initially cut through the mountain using the paths with the tunneling option turned on, then went back, deleted the paths, and smoothed each surface to the level I wanted it. But that's a lot of walking if there's nothing else to see up here. So what can we do? Well, back in episode 3, I talked about the research I'd done on zoos and sanctuaries in Alberta, and it turned out that many protected areas in the province are for the incredible array of birds that live there. In the northern and mountainous regions of Alberta, as well as throughout North America, one of the most protected birds is the bald eagle. It is a species of least concern now, but it was endangered before protective efforts started, with only 417 pairs left in all of the United States in 1963. Not so great for a national symbol. Today, that number is up to over 70,000 nesting pairs, so we are going to be building an aviary for these beautiful creatures. Starting with a circular base because I wanted a portion of the aviary to rise up into a peak so it looks like there are two peaks up here at the top of the mountain. Going to attempt to make the mesh look like netting that drapes from the tallest center point down to the top of this circular barrier. Setting up the walls with a piece of stained wood, metal beams to hold the mesh in place, and a wood beam to cover up the top part of the wall. I ended up doing this three panels at a time because I didn't want the heavier metal beams every two meters around the perimeter. Instead, I have them set up every three panels and the grassland pole as a join between each angled face. This makes the aviary feel a bit lighter visually and provides better viewing areas for guests. I did steal many of the pieces and the colors from the owl aviary we built not that long ago. Why reinvent the wheel when we've already done it, right? Lots of aviaries popping up in True North Sanctuary lately. And I have to say, I have really enjoyed building them, even though we don't have real habitat animals to put in them. Hint, hint, frontier. <laughs> I might have to start building similar structures for the smaller animals we have in game. Popped a mud column down in the center and then rotated the finished walls all around. Snapping to the center of the mud column, I also placed down a tall timber piece from which the netting will cascade. This did take a bit of trial and error, but I started at the top with the grassland pole at a sharper angle and worked my way down, gradually getting more shallow. This is how fabric or netting would naturally flow, so we're trying to get a similar feel with this line. The only issue is that it has to connect at the top and at the metal beam on the side, which is what took me a few tries to figure out. Once I was happy with the first line, I could rotate that across using the mud pillar once more and then every 15 degrees on angle snap because that's how I had set up my walls so that worked out very nicely. To get the mesh pieces flush in between each section, I used a trick that I can't take credit for. I learned how to do this from Gecko. He hangs out in a few Discord servers I'm in, and we chatted for over an hour while he streamed a build he's working on for Pacha's Wahat Jamila project, and basically taught me how to build aviaries. So these plastic rectangles are obviously much brighter and easier to see than the mesh pieces, and therefore easier to get into the correct place. I'm going to position these all the way up the contour line I've set up and then we'll add the mesh over top, aligning it to the surface. With angle snap on, rotate the mesh 90 degrees and it should be sitting right against the rectangle. Then I'll fill in each section as best as I can. There's going to be quite a few little pieces sticking out, but you really can't tell from a distance or with the amount of mesh this aviary ends up having. And this way, you end up having a nice, curved, almost net-like piece, and creating it didn't make you want to pull your hair out nearly as much as it would have otherwise. Please don't ask me how much I hate mesh pieces right now though, I definitely need a break from them. I might have been able to use the new netting pieces from the Oceania DLC, but I really wanted to try out this method. Shout out to Gecko once more. 
With this section done, we can copy it across, delete the other contour lines that we created earlier because those were just placeholders, and replace them with the fully netted version we have now. Once we've added on this additional section, you can see me build a similar shape in the owl aviary video. It's time to close off the rest of the roof. I'm extending a line of grassland poles from each corner in this curve to the corner of the backstage building. Then that will be all meshed over, fitting the pieces as close to the metal beams without too much overlap as possible. The pathing was, once again, very annoying and kept telling me it was obstructed even though the floor was definitely flat and I had gone over it with smoothing and flattened to terrain many times. So here's a tip I would have loved to know. Make sure the ceiling is high enough. The terrain obstructing the path was actually the overhang and not the floor. It took me so long to figure that out. <laughs> To support the tunnel, I took inspiration from the wooden structures commonly used in mines. I recently toured a coal mine down in Crow's Nest Pass, Alberta, and the entrance tunnel had something similar to this, where the horizontal beam was braced with an almost arch-like piece on the side. Arches are very strong shapes, and that's exactly what we need to hold up the top of this mountain. How realistic is this portion of True North Sanctuary? Honestly, not very, especially if you consider how much this would cost. It just probably wouldn't be worth it in construction costs or upkeep, but this is a fictional zoo and I can do what I want. To speed up the building process, I also added these beams on the side to both hold the walls back and align the sides of the path. Want to make this area feel kind of claustrophobic in a sense because it is supposed to emulate a mine. The sides and top will also have mesh to prevent smaller rocks from falling into the tunnel. The ceiling I went ahead and filled with a variety of rocks so that I didn't have to place each individual rock afterwards. Especially when you're building in an enclosed space like this, I find the camera so difficult to position correctly, so it was just easier to do it outside of the tunnel. Then this finished piece is going to get copied along the tunnel length. Some details in the form of a door so the keepers can get in and out of the implied backstage area for the eagles. Doorways are finally one of those items that I feel like I can build quickly and efficiently and to scale, though this one wasn't detailed in the slightest. Popping in some rocks all around the tunnel entrances and around the edge of this cliff to add more life to the mountain. Though I don't hate the rock texture, especially if you mix it with soil, it's not super repetitive. The texture of the rocks is much better. Inside the aviary, we are once again using the aviary prop pack by Jaguar X to add some perches, feeding stations, and more to the enclosure. This perch I just made larger so it would fit this big window that the eagles can use to get in and out of the backstage building. There will only be two eagles here, a nesting pair, and any chicks they have will be released into the wild. With the bald eagle's status as a protected species, they are not supposed to be kept in zoos unless they are un unable to be released into the wild. So maybe an injury that prevents them from flying or being able to hunt properly or whatever. While something like this might be true for our nesting pair, it wouldn't be for their offspring, which means the sanctuary can not only safely and legally exhibit bald eagles, but also contribute to repopulation efforts. Since this zoo would be located somewhere in in northern and mountainous Alberta, it is also entirely possible that there would be a wild eagle population nearby. This enclosure felt really big, so I added a lot of foliage, though much of it is closer to the ground to still allow the eagles to spread their wings if they so choose. A fun fact I learned while researching was that bald eagles will lose feathers symmetrically to keep themselves balanced, so if a feather on their left wing gets pulled out, they'll purposely lose a feather on their right wing. Such a cool adaptation. Now, in order to even get up there and see the bald eagles, we have a switch back up the left side of the mountain. This is the real reason why this area of the zoo is called the mountain hike. Though the incline is quite steep and it's likely not all guests could get up to the top or would even want to, I do have an accessibility solution that you'll see in the tour in just a bit. 
Each of these mountain faces got the rock treatment as well as a bunch of foliage added. These manzanita bushes are very useful for screening off the area behind the mountain. I don't use these often enough. They're also easy to sink into the ground and use as low cover. Then the whole path was lined with these simple fences. We've used these in a few different spots, including the entry plaza, along the river in the woodland area, and in the butterfly trail. Finally, some more signage. We'll need something new for the hike up, and I think I have just the thing. Wow, it's already time for the tour. It feels like that build didn't go too long, but I wasn't about to make you watch me place rocks for half an hour. So we are walking up to our new area. So we have our new little binocular symbol on our wayfinding signage. And as we round this corner, this is the backstage area of the doll sheep, but we are going to go straight ahead up this switchback path. Um, to light it up at night, I just place these little lanterns all over the place so you can see them in the rocks once in a while. And that's just to echo the way the lanterns are around the edge of the doll sheep habitat. So I'm really happy that that is a theme that I could continue through here. Oh, the frame rate is dropping as we face the rest of the zoo. <laughs> also, these cute little barrels for the lanterns to stand on. I thought that worked with the mining theme pretty well. And it suits the garbage cans too, so all works together. And then, wow, that actually didn't take as long as I thought it would. We find ourselves at the top. So down to the right, we can see the doll sheep enclosure as soon as my laptop frame rate catches up. There we go. So we have the doll sheep habitat down below us. And over here we have some binoculars that we can use to look out over the rest of the zoo. Um, this one more so, see if we can spot maybe some of the moose and beavers. This one, uh, will be pointed towards the cold zone over there, the Arctic area, which we haven't built yet, obviously. Let's head through the tunnel. So again, we have the lanterns lighting everything up. And then this is the accessibility um, option that I was talking about. So I actually put an elevator in here, and this is accessible through the backstage building of the doll sheep. I didn't actually carve a tunnel into the mountain because I just didn't want to, but it would ideally just have a walkway that goes somewhere under this mountain, and then you can pop right up here with the elevator. And here's our backstage access, so we'll actually go in there first and we find ourselves in the backstage area for the eagles. So we have a little nest, some perching areas, we have some food on the ground, a water dish, and then some water tools that we might need, transport cages, all that fun stuff. And then that's how you get into the habitat. But we are gonna finish our walk through here. So, we have some mine carts in the corner, along with some shovels, and this is the education for this area. Need to add some signage still, but that will come at a later date, probably for the final tour, because I've been really slacking on my signage, other than the animal signage, which you can see one over here. Um, so yeah, that'll just be a game of catch up before the final tour, I think. And here we have our bald eagle aviary. So again, plenty of perches for them to sit on. And we can see our bald eagles in their nest all the way over there. I'm so happy with the way that netting turned out. I think it looks so good with the two peaks there beautiful. The eagles. And then all around us is just forest. Okay. 
Some of it still needs to get filled in, but for now. We'll just keep it like this. So there we go. That's basically it for today's build. Next week, we are not yet finishing the mountain hike area. We do have two more animals to add, and then we will be headed over to the cold zone. Very excited for that one. I did also want to show you some nighttime shots because the lighting came out gorgeous. This is one area I'm definitely getting better at. If you've made it this far, thank you for sticking around. It's your comments and likes and overall support that keep pushing me to build and get better. Also, this channel is 60 subscribers shy of hitting 1000, so if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button. As always, here is a shot of the zoo before, and here it is after today's build. See you next time. Bye!